Hey y'all, uh, I've been getting some questions and some curiosity about my home theater setup, mainly my home theater PC that I built. Uh, and I guess I'll show it off to you guys, see what I'll have on it. I'm pretty proud of it. We don't have like normal TV. The only recent game console I have is the Wii, which I don't play much. So pretty much just uh, home theater PC is our only entertainment. But uh, once you see everything on it, I think you'll see we get by pretty good. It's got tons of entertainment options and really enjoy it. Uh, for, I guess I'll go over the hardware first. I got it on the table here. I got some game pads, basically some three Logitech 360 style game pads for the games. Mostly like retro gaming is what I do on it, but if I ever wanted to do modern gaming on it, I probably could. I uh, got a standard home theater, keyboard, and remote. Uh, they got both got trackballs on them. Um, pretty much you can do everything on this you can with a normal keyboard. It's pretty comfortable to use when you're just browsing the internet and things like that. I uh, will go look at the box itself now. Pretty old case, but I like itself so stuck to using it. It's basically home theater style PC case. As you can see, it matches up with the other equipment pretty good. It's got a little cover that you can push open. Don't have most of this hooked up. Got USB hooked up and the card readers hooked up. Don't really have. I had. You can, it's got a TV input uh, connection adapter where you can like hook it to a TV input car, but I don't have that installed anymore since I don't really have TV. Um, and in the back, can't really see it, but got wireless card and all the hookups. It's basically got everything a normal PC has. Uh, it uses some micro ATX motherboard, so. Pretty much all the hardware you'd ever need to use, it's compatible with, and you can upgrade it whenever you need to. I will go over the software that I have on it. I have an older style projection TV. I'd like to get a newer one, but this one is pretty big and looks pretty good, so I'm probably going to keep it for a little while until it tears up. It's a little hard. It's not quite full HD, but it gets me by. The, ma the first software I want to show you, I got, it has a standard start menu on it, but it's a little, even with everything adjusted to full size, it's a little hard to read and navigate. So I have this program called Rocket Launch. It has all the programs we use mostly. And like a quick interface at the top. And you just hold your mouse up to the top of the screen. And that menu will come up. And you can click on it. Uh, as you can see, first thing I have on the menu is Xbox Media Center. We'll open that. you probably heard of that before. It's mainly the program we use for watching TV, watching movies. It plays your disc, uh, DVDs, and CDs. But... For the most part, we watch stuff off the hard drive that we've downloaded or ripped to the hard drive. Uh, the interface is really nice. Let me get the rocket spin off. Basically, just to get that off the screen, you can move the mouse down. As you can see, there's all things you can do with it. We got movies, TV shows, videos, music, pictures. We'll go look at some movies and where you can see the interface. I used the default interface for a long time, but I started using one called Metropolis that really looks neat and really shows off the artwork and stuff that Xbox can do to display your movies. As you can see it shows some of the recent movies that you've added to your folder down here and you can quickly watch them like the recent things that's detected. We've downloaded some weird movies lately. But we'll go to the interface and look at them. And I have it set to do like for the movies with lots of uh, like collections of movies in a series it'll you can do a setting to automatically put them in there let's go to like the alien series I love my alien movies and as you can see it shows like a background image and description and kind of a movie poster set up and the movies you've already watched it'll show like a check mark on them And we'll see what it looks like when we go to play a movie. 
I'm basically using the boxy interface right now, just the arrow keys, but you can just as easily use the remote. Basically use the arrow keys on the remote to navigate the menus and the OK button. And you can skip through it with the remote, just like you would on a DVD. But here, there's the movies. We'll check out the TV shows. As you can see, the TV shows do the same thing. Uh, you have all the artwork and stuff that it downloads in the descriptions. Only difference is once you choose a show, let's say Game of Thrones, each season has its own artwork and stuff like that. You can go in and pick what episode you want to watch and see like the little vid cap of the episode. Yeah, that's basically Xbox Media Center. We used to use, we tried several other things before, uh, but like I use a software called Boxy, and it's a lot easier to configure, but it doesn't give you the custom, custom ability that Xbox Media Center does. Xbox Media Center takes a little bit longer to learn and to get it going, but once you do, you'll be really impressed with it. Basically, once you have it set up, you just download your shows, uh, or rip your shows as long as they're named in a certain format which most shows you download are named properly nowadays I, the program automatically detects them whenever you start it up and I have it set to like automatically update the library to make scan for new videos and automatically ask them for you so basically just download your shows and then open the program and watch it we'll shut this down now and I'll show you the next piece of software Now this is my baby here. I love this software. It's called Hyperspin. And basically it's an interface to play. If you've heard of emulators and ROMs and stuff like that, you know, basically for old school and retro gaming. This is a program that basically lets you, once you have it set up properly, it lets you easily navigate all your games with some, you know, some really nice fancy artwork. Looks really professional. Uh, most people use it on like arcade cabinets. Um, it works out really well on a, a home theater PC as well. We'll open it up and I'll show you. I'll turn the sound on for it too so we can hear it. It has some nice sound effects. And it's going to be this icon, the HS icon. One thing I really want to do on this eventually is get some faster hard drives because I do have some older hard drives. They have large capacity, but they're really slow, especially for Hyperspin. This is a big program that's mostly flash based. So it does it run it doesn't run as quite as well as I'd like, and it takes a very long time to start up. Basically, there's my Super Nintendo or my regular Nintendo, and we'll get the gamepad out. You can use the keyboard for this, but you can also use the gamepad. I have two of them for Player One and Player Two. I basically have some labels where I can see this is Player Two. Let's get Player One.
And basically, I have basically every system you can think of that plays decently on the on the big screen. All the Nintendo, all the Sega. This takes an extremely long time to get set up and working properly, but that's really part of the fun. I probably spent probably more time actually setting it up than playing, but I'm getting to the point where I play more than than set up now, so it's it's basically it's really worth it. But let's go to the system and we'll show you how the game launching works. We'll go to my favorite. I love me some Super Nintendo. Oh, and it's on a good game already. Let's play some Zelda Link to the Past. Basically, the way the interface works is on the controller. It's got the same buttons as the 360 does. These are Logitech controllers, but you can map them any way you want when you hook them to a PC. Basically, you have like a back back button and uh, start button. To go back in the menu you can just hit back and it'll go take you to the main system screen. To go to whatever system you want to use you just hit start. And to start the actual game we, we'll cycle through or through where you can see. And each game has like a box art and a video. But we'll go ahead and launch Zelda. And as you can see, it starts up and plays just like the original system. And the configuration basically depends on the emulator. I, the emulator I use is, you know, the SNES 9X. And you can set the graphics to however you want. I like the standard, even though I'm using a widescreen, I just use a standard format for the, just a 4-3 ratio for the screen. To play it like I did back in the day. Oh, the video is kind of bad. Oh, there it goes. But there you go. There's some Super Nintendo. Uh, basically, the exit of game. I just have it set to use a button I never use to exit all the games. Basically, the the, the click of the right stick will exit the games for me. I figured I'd never use that in any game system, so just set it to a button that is seldom used. Oh, I don't want to exit quite yet. Let's show you guys another system. Let's go to PlayStation. This is probably the last one I added. Hello, citizens of Europe. Yes. Let me see what game we can play. Yeah, we'll do Final Fantasy. Or we'll do Chrono Cross. Same deal, you get your video and your artwork. This is a little more tricky to configure than like the regular like Nintendo or Super Nintendo because you basically have to set up daemon tools to mount your CD and then the emulator will read your mounted drive. But as you can see it should start up and play just as the normal system. Even with the full logo and everything. We'll watch a little bit of the intro video and you can see how well it plays.
I'm really more of a retro gamer than I am a modern gamer. Uh, I like some modern games, but I don't know if you ga if you grew up with the retro age of gaming. It's really hard to enjoy games, modern games for me, because it's just not quite the same. I mean, the graphics are better sometimes. Is you got a lot more options, but they just don't register the same way that the old games do. And it's just amazing being able to go back to, and play him again. Because if you're silly like me, you probably sold... Like, you probably had all the good games for your Super Nintendo or regular Nintendo. And when you got older, you sold all your Nintendo, all your stuff. And you're always like, well, I should have saved that. That was... Not only is it probably worth a, a pretty much more money now, but you don't get to play the games anymore. But... Probably some of the best music on the PlayStation. There's some Chrono Cross. Just gonna exit out of that. But yeah, that's Hyperspin, and that is probably probably the funnest thing that I've set up on here in a while. It is just really fun to go back and play all your old games and systems. So even the ones that you didn't have, like I missed a Turbo Graphics 16. And going back and playing all the new games on that that I never played before is kind of refreshing. It's like you're playing new old school games. I have quite a few that I really don't care to like. I don't know why I have the Virtual Boy on here. It's fun to look at, but it doesn't quite give you the same effect. You don't get the eye strain coolness that you got on the original. I'd imagine. Uh, you can still play it and everything, but like the Game Boy and Game Gear, they're not quite the same either. They launch in full screen. We'll look at the Game Boy, for example. I have them on here for completion and just to play some of the games every now and then. Let's see if I got the Zelda. I think I do got the Zelda for this one, which is basically the only game I ever played on Game Boy that I enjoyed. Launches in full screen, playable, not quite the same as when you're playing on your handheld. Still playable though. But yeah, I'll put the links to Hyperspin uh, and Xbox Media Center and any other software I use in the description. But Hyperspin is definitely a good community to be a part of if you're. It's. Uh, once you first start pr trying to use it, it's a little daunting, but they got a good community. Answer all your questions and help you get everything set up. The main part is just getting all the artwork and stuff set up so that your so that your program looks professional and all your games have like a video and artwork and things like that. All right, we'll go look and see what else I got on here. Only other thing I have is like U Torrent. We check on the torrents of the program or the shows and things we're downloading. I got the magnifier, so we're when you're working with files or something, you don't have to strain at the screen because it is kind of hard to read. Like when you're working like as a regular PC, moving files around and stuff like that. Uh, we got Chrome, so we can watch, read our websites, and watch YouTube. 
think Xbox, the Xbox Media Center ex, has an uh, extension for watching YouTube, but we still just use the browser just because it tends to work better. And it displays all the videos that we want to watch. I think the add-ons don't really display everything. And we'll just go straight to YouTube. Basically, you can browse through your videos. And you can control and you can zoom in and out depending on how big you want it to be. Mostly though, we'll just zoom it out a little bit where we can just Hit our full screen on it and watch it full screen. And that's pretty up, pretty much the setup. Uh, not much else to say about it. But we really enjoy it and watch, uh, get a lot of entertainment out of it. But thanks for watching, guys. And let me know if you have any questions and if you're interested in setting any of this up, if you need some help, I'll be glad to help you.